So you're getting a PhD in fusion energy? It's in plasma physics, which is the study of the material that we use to generate fusion energy. Okay, and what are we seeing here behind you? Uh, here we have the lithium tokamak experiment, and we're a small-scale spherical tokamak. And so essentially we have a plasma inside of this vessel, which is a very, very hot gas. So essentially if you have a solid and you heat it up, you get a liquid. If you have a liquid and you heat it up, you get a gas. Well, if you have a gas and you keep heating that up, Eventually, you rip off electrons and you form a plasma. And that's the fourth state of matter. And that's the fourth state of matter, And this exactly. is the heat that is ten times the, the core of the sun? Or? Well, what happens is inside a plasma, you can form these fusion reactions. And so we take these very light atoms, like hydrogen or deuterium, and we join them together. And when they join together, they emit a large amount of energy. And that's the temperature that's hotter than the sun. Okay, so they... The, the plasma is just simply the medium in which the atoms are moving together? Yes, exactly. But it's, it's magnets and lasers that are forcing them together? Well, what we do here is we take mag uh, magnetic fields and we form a magnetic bottle. So essentially you have this very hot, very energetic plasma. And you can't confine it with any type of ordinary material because it would immediately destroy it. And so what we do is we confine it in a magnetic bottle. And so essentially you have all of these magnetic fields and what you see here the colored coils mm -hmm. are actually all of the magnetic field coils. And so we put current through them, and that's what forms this magnetic bottle. And inside of that magnetic bottle is the plasma. So at this young age, you have a sort of a grip on what kind of a future energy source this might be? I think it has a lot of potential. There's certainly a lot of work left to do, but since the birth of the field 50 years ago or 60 years ago, there's really been tremendous progress, as well as uh, a huge number of technologies that have resulted from plasma physics and magnetic fusion research. I mean, there's somebody young, uh, not quite as young as you, in New York who's building it, who's doing his own little fusion reaction, you know, at his own little lab that he built with, it, mm -hmm. with a couple of tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, what do you think when you, when you hear about guys like that? I think it's really exciting that plasma physics as a field can still be both small scale and huge scale. And so I think it's great that you have kind of your uh, backyard experimenters who are investigating the field and potentially coming out with new science. And then at the same time, you have um, medium scale experiments, you have large scale experiments, and you have huge scale experiments like ITER. So those guys can potentially make a difference? I think they could contribute to the field, certainly. Um, I don't think that we'll see um, a garage scale fusion reactor, but I think they could certainly come out with something interesting that scientists might be able to use. Would you be able to build one of these in your garage? Um, it would have to be a pretty large garage, <laughs> actually, so um, maybe. <laughs> I mean, on your own, could you make an, a fusion reaction of any size? Um, well, so it's an interesting question. Um, fusion reactions can occur at a very small scale. And in that sense, it's not really a viable source of energy. Right. That would be more thinking about um, using a pinwheel to generate wind energy. Right. You could actually drive a turbine with a pinwheel, but it wouldn't generate much Sustainable. energy. Sustainable. But, but you could do it? Um, I, I don't know. One of the... One of the small Little scales, one. sure, I think I've definitely gained um, a huge amount of right. knowledge, both um, experimental science, theoretical science, as well as technical and engineering right. knowledge from working on a machine like this. Tell LPS. me just in your own voice, um, just about you as a student, how did you get involved in this? What attracted you? What excites you sure. about all this? Well, I think that um, plasma physics and magnetic fusion energy is a really exciting, really promising field. And it's a type of field where you can really uh, be a part of it and you can actually be making a tangible difference. I think. But when you're in high school and you're looking at colleges, how, do you, how did you find it to be exciting? Well, when I was in high school, I basically took every science class that my high school offered. And then when I went to college, um, it was similar and I double majored in physics and chemistry. So you knew you loved physics already. I knew I loved physics and as an intern uh, during college, I actually worked here at PPL. Uh -huh. And I thought that the research was really exciting, and I really liked the people that I met. It's really an unparalleled opportunity to be a student at a lab like PPL, because if you have a question on, uh, say, this theory that I'm a little confused about, it's quite possible that someone right down the hall actually developed that theory. And you can just walk down and knock on their door and ask them to explain uh, your question. And so it's a really fantastic opportunity to learn in that kind of environment. It just, um, I mean, even in this day and age when young people are so savvy and, and knowledgeable about everything, it still seems unique to see a young girl 
um, bury herself in something <laughs> in something so technical and so not non-social, but I mean, you're alone in this lab a good part of the time. Um, I actually we have a. a relatively large group of students as well as scientists and engineers who also work on this experiment. So you have fun during your day as well as learning everything? I do, I do. I definitely really enjoy it. I've been able to learn an incredible amount and then the team of people that we have working on LTX are really incredible people. Uh, incredibly knowledgeable as well as just very nice and fun people to be around. So what do you want to do with yourself? Um, actually at this point I'm taking a look at some science policy positions and, uh, and I'm kind of keeping my options open. So, so you may be in D.C. where Clean Skies is? Uh, yes, yes, that's very possible. Actually, I, I will be in D.C. for the next year, um, working as a science policy advisor in the Senate. And then after that, I'm open to uh, possibly returning to research or maybe staying in science policy. Wow, so you're really so. interested in where um, sort of the regulations and rules get made to make sure that uh, that uh, yes. I guess fusion and plasma physics has its seat at the table? Yes, absolutely. And I think that there's a disconnect between scientists who are doing the research and um, politicians and policy folks who are making the, the laws and the funding decisions affecting the research. And so I think it's, it's really important to have people who both have a scientific background and are excited about the science to be helping inform the, the policy decisions. Do you worry about uh, funding because so much of the research into fusion energy and all plasma physics depends on it? Um, I don't necessarily worry about the funding, but I just think it's very important for scientists in the fusion field to maintain strong advocacy for what they're doing and to really say why what they're doing is important. So 20 years from now, 30 years from now, where, where might we see you? That's a great question. Um, I really don't know yet. I could be back in research or maybe down in D.C. doing science policy work. So oh, you'll be in plasma the, physics? Uh, I think something related to plasma physics. Do yes. you think by then we'll be seeing fusion energy as a major source of uh, electricity? I don't think in 20 years we'll see fusion as a commercial source of energy in the sense that PSE&G, I can select solar, wind, or fusion. But I think in 20 years' time, we will see uh, certainly great progress towards that goal. I think we'll see um, close to demonstration reactors, which can output electricity, but not really at the stage where it's commercial electricity yet. And you'll work on the funding so we get there. I hope so. I hope <laughs> right. so. Thank you very much. <laughs>